right. Welcome back, everybody. We'll be playing Green Tron now for the uh, next Kano Tryharding Modern YouTube video. And uh, I just took the most recent 5-0. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about in this list. It looks like they've doubled up on a couple of effects for the wishboard for like actual sideboarding purposes. Um, they've put four Oblivion Stones and four Worm Coils in the main, which tells me this list is kind of teched against aggro and Blood Moon. So we'll see how we do. But uh, let's go ahead and take this into a modern league. See what happens. Let me make sure I queued in with the right deck. I'm sorry to hear about your window wells flooding. That's never fun. <clears throat> I've actually been struggling a little bit with the internet um, here where I'm streaming from. The We have like a second, wi uh, second router as a Wi-Fi extender, but it's like conflicting slightly with the router, uh, the main router, because there are certain things that I can do while connected to the Wi-Fi extender that I can't do connected to the router and vice versa, which is really weird. Um, so I hope that it's not my internet making your internet weird, philosopher. But this will probably be the last league I do today because, like I said, I am stressed about the move and I've got a lot of stuff that I have to get done. But we can at least play a Tron League. Okay, I would like to play first. Uh, this hand is a mulligan, as is this one. Hey, Sigma. Good luck with the move. Um, I'm going to four. All right. Keep. Uh, we're keeping Tron plus Star. And we're going to start with Mine, Chromatic Star, pass the turn. You had a big thunderstorm last night? I see. That explains the window wells flooding. I'm glad I kept this particular hand if my opponent is playing Tron. Although, I do need a Karn if they're playing Tron. Um, play Power Plant, play Map, pass the turn. Um, in the Tron versus Tron matchup, if it's green Tron versus green Tron, you basically, first person to interact with the opponent's mana base will. Now, if they don't have natural Tron, that does, do, does give me one extra turn, um, but it's looking like they do. Chalice on one. We get an Ugin. Um, this could be Eldrazi Tron. Green Tron doesn't generally play Chalice in the main deck, so I'm going to play Worm Coil Engine. Pass the turn. So if this is like Karn Liberated... Okay, it's Thought Not Seer taking our Ugin. So it is Eldrazi Tron. That does make me feel slightly better. Opponent is going to dismember Worm Coil and then play Walking Ballista on one to ping Worm Coil down. It's a pretty hefty investment of resources. Okay, we untap. We draw a Forest. It's not really what I want to see. Um, I can go and get Besiege you and take out Tower, which I'm going to do, I think. Play a Forest attack with the death touch token now if they're just playing wastes they can't actually tutor for any basics okay they are playing forest so this could still be like a, a weird variant of green tron they had the redundant tower my luck if i'd hit any other land they'd have had that too this is probably little ugin chalice on three that's weird but okay uh i can't play that or rather, I can, but it just won't do anything. Attack with the Death Touch token. Take them to 10. Um, as for whether or not holding on to Chromatic Sphere is a good idea, I'm going to hold on to it for now. Um, I think they put that Chalice on 3 simply to stop, like, Ensnaring Bridge, and I guess Oblivion Stone, but there's an Ulamog. Attack for 3. Any Tron land gets us to Ulamog. Okay, Saga ticks up to 2. Probably off of Saga, they're going to get either Shadow Spear or Basilisk Collar. Wow, second thought not, right on time. So they take Ulamog. And they have a Seagate Wreckage. They attack us for four, no blocks. Um, so any threat is good. That is not a threat. Go to combat. Attack for three. Oh, I guess I should have thought about them making a token that the, we could attack into. Okay. They make a 3-3 token. They trade with the Death Touch guy, I think. Or not. Okay, they go to 4. Um, Saga's last ability triggers. They make a token in response. It's probably a Shadow Spear. They get an Expedition map. They play an Eldrazi Temple. So they can attack for 11 here. We'd go to 5. Um, we don't block because if we draw Ugin, that's lethal. Okay, opponent sacks map. 
gets besiege you. Oh no. Well, I think that guarantees that we die. Ulamog here would have been so good too. Ulamog would have won the game. <laughs> Lame. And that's off the forest that we gave them with Besiju. Yeah, so... Uh, I've not run into Eldrazi Tron since Besiju was legal, um, except for one time, and the time that I did that, they had no forests in their deck. It was just wastes, so it was like sinkhole. And it was really good. Um, unfortunately, they're playing around that now, which makes perfect sense. So Ugin's really bad in this matchup. Um, so I'm going to cut an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, because I have the Ineffable. I think I'm going to cut both. We're going to try it like this. Okay, I do want to play first. Okay, this is Tron, so I am going to keep. Hey, Carrion Lich, how's it going? Let's go mine into map. Opponent Pithing Needles map, which is really bad for us. It's not my list, but Ugin the Ineffable is better than a lot of people give it credit for in a lot of decks. Okay. Uh, we draw a Chromatic Star, so a Play Star. I'm gonna hold off on cracking it just yet. Just in case we draw, like, Sylvan Scrying. Opponent's second land is Eldrazi Temple. They've Pithing Needled their own expedition map. Uh, we draw another star. So, Sack Star for green. Let's see what we draw. Last zone. Um, I guess play another power plant. Play Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. Opponent passes to second main phase and then passes turn. We untap and draw Ancient Stirrings. So, sack for green, draw a card, Ancient Stirrings, cast Ancient Stirrings. Unfortunately, no tower. Um, but I can take a Forest, or I can take a Chromatic Sphere and cast another Ancient Stirrings. Um, I'm gonna go with the, f I'm gonna go with the Chromatic Sphere actually. This gives me less mana, I think overall, but uh, gets me another card deep into the deck. We do find a Tower. So play Tower, play Oblivion Stone, pass the turn. And I mean, if we untap without our opponent playing a Thought Knot Seer, we're casting an Ulamog. Okay, this is Thought Knot Seer, then I guess they take Ulamog and we play Ugin. Okay, there goes Ulamog. We untap, we draw Chromatic Star. So, play Ugin, play Star for free. Zack Star for green, draw another tower. Um, I think I'm gonna Blast Zone all the one drops. And then uptick Ugin. Okay, there's a Karn Great Creator under our token, which is really good. Um, if our opponent does have a way to destroy a land, we have redundant pieces of either of the Tron lands they could destroy. Like, best case scenario for our opponent, I think, is like Dismember followed up immediately by a Thought Knot Seer. They attack Ugin down to one. We draw a Chromatic Sphere. What is in our sideboard specific? So we would be getting Sundering Titan, which wouldn't destroy any lands, but it would just be a big... I guess I could get Walking Ballista here. That wouldn't be unreasonable. I, mean, I have more than enough mana for that to be good. Coding? Um, coding's only good if... No, I guess coding works. All right, well, let's draw a card first. A map. Happy birthday! Um... Play Tower, play Karn, play Map, wish for coding, play coding without mana, uptick Ugin, make a blocker, game's over. Alright, you guys are right, you guys are right, going for the coding, that match win, match loss, uh, no further adjustments, run it back. I guess that was probably the stronger line, as I could have just mapped for Yavi Maya, but I was thinking about what I was doing for that turn too late. I'd already locked myself into one line of thought without exploring that as an option. Um, we definitely have better openers than this one, so we're going to mulligan. Opponent also mulligan to six. I'm going to go on to five. By five, I mean four. All right, sure. Uh, we're putting back, I guess, Besiju and Map and Wormcoil. Now, they can't Pithing Needle Chromatic Sphere. 
Okay, they start Tronland map. We draw Ugin. Play Tronland Sphere. Okay, opponent is going to have Tron. I'm surprised at how consistent our Eldrazi Tron opponent has been at assembling Tron. Sack for green. Let's go get mine. Pass the turn. Opponent maps for tower. As long as it's not Karn, we're fine. I... Chalice on one. Pass. The old mulligan to four win the game? Question mark. <laughs> Opponent's angry. They play Saga. We untap and draw Ulamog. Um, uptick on their hand. Attacking their mana base is too aggressive here. We're going to be playing Ugin, which can make blockers. We get another Chalice. Play Ugin. Uptick. Redundant Tron land under the Ugin token. Saga ticks up to two. They play a forest. Four mana. They play Karn. Karn wishes. Liquid Metal Coating. Yeah, that's game. I guess technically leaving them with the forest was slightly better. Because they could still like top deck a Tron land and then play Karn and Snaring Bridge, but we have two active planeswalkers. I don't think there's anything they can do. Yeah, opponent is salty. I mean, I beat. This is a mulligan to four that you're looking at for Tron, but that's how Tron is. And, like, green Tron is much, much more consistently assembling Tron and playing bigger threats than Eldrazi Tron will. Um, it also plays more threats that interact with the mana base, so I feel like we're favored. But, I mean, that Chalice on one probably locked them out of some stuff, too, so. Opponent sent me a message. Something in a foreign language. Probably a bunch of curse words or something, I don't know. I can barely read English, don't expect me to read other languages. Yeah, it was probably something like, I hope you die. <laughs> oh well. Moving on around two. Maybe. Maybe not. I also, you know, I don't get the insulting your opponent being salty. Like, I understand being like, oh, that deck is, this deck is so good, or you got lucky, but like, no. Seems like that's going a little far. I used to, um, I used to actually screenshot and keep a folder of like some of the nasty things that people said to me, because it was fun when you were playing like decks that were way off meta and you would beat like a two thousand dollar Jund deck with like a two hundred dollar mono blue time warps or something like that. Oh, this is very, very easily a keep. Opponent starts bobble, bobbles themselves. That's what cats are expected to do, right, Tarek? Uh, then they play Spire Bluff Canal and pass. We untap, they draw a card, we draw a card. It's Ancient Stirrings. Play Power Plant, play Map. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Plays a Polluted Delta. Passes. We draw a Chromatic Sphere. Play Tower. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks Polluted Delta. It's a Hollowed Fountain tapped. Sure. They untap. Play an island. We're gonna go get Urza's mine. I draw Sanctum. Okay. So because I drew Sanctum, I'm gonna start by playing Karn Great Creator. Okay. Then gets counterspelled. Play Sphere. Sack Sphere for green. We draw a map. Ancient Stirring. Get Spell Pierced. Can't pay. Play map. Boy, I'm glad they didn't save that Spell Pierce for another threat. <laughs> like, as it probably got more counter spells, but three mana. Don't plays Teferi. Time Raveler. Bounces Expedition Map. Plays a bauble. Cracks a bauble. Okay. We untap. We draw Oblivion Stone. Play Sanctum. Play Map. Play Karn. Sack Sanctum. Uh, let's go get Sundering Titan. Karn away the red land. Pass the turn. <laughs> Never feed dinner before noon. Oh my gosh. I'm some spoiled cats. Okay. We untap, we draw an Urza's Tower. Uh, let's go ahead and uptick on their hand. We get an Unholy Heat. I mean, this is really just bait for a counter spell at this point. Okay. Pass the turn. Put it up, ticks to fairy to three. Sack map. Yeah, I guess I just get Yavi Maya. Draw forest. Play Yavi Maya. Ancient stirring. Opponent spell pierces. We'll pay for it. Um, get Ugin. Rest of the bottom. Nah. Eh, all right. We'll do this and pass the second main so they can't have a second spell pierce. 
Play Ugin. Kill the fairy. Pass the turn. And we get there. All right. Um, so versus Murktide. They do play um, Blood Moon, so Force of Vigor's got to come in. I'll put one Oblivion Stone in the side. Karn Liberated is also not that good against them, but I'm going to drop a Worm Coil um, just so it's in the wishboard. We still have access to it. We need the Emmercool. <laughs> what do we need the Emmercool for? Uncounterability? I don't think so. I have never actually gotten to 15 mana in Tron and won. I think every time I've gotten to that much mana, I've just bricked because I've had too many lands. Um, so these are like purely you bring them in for the mill matchup. Um, we're going to run it back. Never have I seen such cowardice. <laughs> All right, this is a mulligan. Okay, this might work. Um, I'm going to put back Ugin. Yeah, Double Sanctum Weaver will, in general, let you cast Emrakul. Opponent starts Fetch Shock Ragavan. We're going to go Mine Star. Pass the turn. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Bauble. Gets a Surveil. Puts an Archmage's Charm into the grave. Bauble's our top deck. And plays Hollowed Fountain Tapped. They attack us for two. And they exile a forest. We untap and draw Power Plant. Play Power Plant. Um, all right. When it goes to combat, they attack for three. They exile Force of Vigor. Justice strikes again. <laughs> okay, so they're not gonna they're not gonna cast Force of Vigor. I don't think there's anything I need to besiege you, so I think I'm just gonna sack this for green on their end step. Oblivion Stone. All right. Untap. Draw Forest. Play Tower, play Karn, it's like 100% a counterspell. Dovin's Veto, okay, they get to Surveil. Yeah, we do play out an Oblivion Stone here. They either have to use both treasures to counter it, or I guess they can use one if they have a Spell Pierce, but yeah, that was worth it. Uh, next turn, we can play Karn, and then and Snaring Bridge gets like a little better, because we have less cards in hand. Okay, they attack us for five. We're going down to ten. Opponent gets a treasure and the top card of our deck, which is Sundering Titan. I mean, we need... We do need something here yet. So if this is a Merc Tide, um, and they're backing this up with Spell Pierce, and Snaring Bridge is decent here. Karn Liberated. Um, Karn Liberated doesn't do anything. Like, I can kill Merc Tide with it, but... Play a Tower. Play Great Creator. Wish. Um... Get Ensnaring Bridge, because otherwise we just die. Play Ensnaring Bridge. Pass the turn. So they can attack everything at Karn, Great Creator to kill him. Now the plan next turn is to play Karn Liberated, nuke something, probably a land, and then besiege you. <laughs> so, that our, so we're empty-handed, or as close to empty-handed as we can get. If they haven't a braid, I think, yeah, if they haven't a braid, we're dead. They have Unholy Heat? Well, they don't have Delirium because they played out Murktide. Yeah, they're going to kill Karn, Great Creator. Okay. We untap and draw a Power Plant. So, play a Forest. Play Karn. I'm thinking more along the lines that this is going to be like Teferi Unsummon. Spell Pierce. Surveil. Uh, Teferi Unsummon Bridge, I mean. They leave it on top. Karn Resolves. Karn... Uh, I think killing Murktide is the safest play. Kill the lands. Well, if they cast a fairy and they bounce bridge, that's their whole turn, and we replay bridge. If we kill Murktide, if we kill Murktide, then even if they Teferi the bridge, we still have a turn. Doesn't matter. They can kill Karn Liberated. That would suck, but... Um, if we take out... We can kill a land, and that way... If, but if they have land Teferi, then we're... We're just done. And whatever they surveilled, they left it on top. I think we kill Murktide. They probably left a land on top. Well, we'll see. Okay, it is Teferi. And they get to bounce bridge, which means they have to spend their turn attacking Karn. And we need to draw a threat. I think that was the best, best play we could make. Okay, we draw star. Play star. Cycle it. All right. Play Karn. Karn. Uptick on them. We get a Ragavan. 
Okay, play Power Plant to play around Spell Pierce. Play Ensnaring Bridge. Pass the turn. <clears throat> okay, opponent up takes Teferi. They have another Teferi. Prismatic ending on Bridge. Okay. So they kill Bridge. They hit us for five. We need another Haymaker here. Like an Ugin or... Actually, I think Ugin. Okay. We draw Ancient Stirrings. So we cast Ancient Stirrings. We get a Chromatic Sphere. So we cycle Chromatic Sphere. And worm Coil's good. Kill Dragon's Rage Channeler. Opponent considers in response. Map for Blast Zone. Um, yeah, that was the safest play. But I mean, if Worm Coil Engine connects with anything, it's game over. Because like we'll, we'll gain too much life at that point. Okay, opponent considers again. The uptick to Fairy to three. And it looks like another Merc Tide here. And they play an 8-8. Alright, yeah, that's game. Down tick on Merc Tide. Blast Zone, Ragavan. Kill to Fairy. And we're at 11. Opponent shocks. Plays a Jace. Unsummons Worm Coil. We draw Sylvan Scrying. Kill Jace. Sylvan Scrying. Uh, I'm gonna get Sanctum. Play Worm Coil. Pass the turn. All right. And we win the match. Putting us at uh, two and zero in this league. Going into round three. Just a quick reminder for all the new viewers: um, exclamation point in your social media of choice will get you a link to any of those of mine. So my Discord, my YouTube. Um, I do have a Twitter and a Patreon, but. If any of those interest you because of the type of content that I create, I highly recommend that you follow, like, or subscribe, depending on your platform of choice. And um, it'd mean the world to me if you did. Snoochie Boochie. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you for following. That's a, that's a great username. Just waiting on round three to start. Yeah. I think this will be the last league I play today simply because um, I have a lot of stuff I still have to pack and I'm moving and... How many days is this? Seven? That's that's gonna be some stress. Alright. Here we go, round three. I would like to play first. Oh, we got two thirds of Tron and Sphere into Scrying, so let's do this. Alright, so we'll start Power Plant into Chromatic Sphere. Pass the turn. Wanna play as Arid Mesa. Fetches, gets a mountain. Okay, so it's looking like burn. Take one, go to 19. We draw a map, play tower, sack sphere for green. We draw another power plant, scrying to go get mine. Pass the turn. The opponent plays an inspiring vantage. Lava spikes us. Down to 16. And suspends rift bolt. Hits us for two. We go to 14. We draw Yavi Maya. Players is mine. Play worm coil engine and expedition map. Pass the turn. Okay, Rift Bolt coming off Suspend. Bolts us down to 11. Wanna play as a Sunbaked Canyon. Does not attack into Worm Coil. We draw Ulamog. Uh, well, that makes life easier. Play Tower. Cast Ulamog. Take out those two cards. And the game is over. All right. We really couldn't have hoped for any better, I don't think. Um, I haven't seen a recent burn list. Let me look up a recent 5-0 list just to see what kind of stuff they're playing out of the side. I think they usually play Smash to Smithereens. They also play Roiling Vortex, Deflecting Palm, and Path. So Force is going to be coming in. I'm going to drop an Oblivion Stone, and I think an Ulamog is a little bit ambitious to try and expect a cast. We did there, but only because it was as fast as you can actually cast an Ulamog. Um, this hand is not keepable. We're going to six. Uh, this one's really not keepable either, so we're going to five. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to we're going to four, and we're gonna have to try and make this work. So Ugin's going back. Um, I need to make Sylvan Scrying work. So I'm putting back. I'm actually gonna put back Forest and Karn. We're gonna try and draw a second land off of Star. I could have put back Star, but I think that it would be too slow. Okay, Goblin Guide as a start for my opponent is good. Us drawing a Sphere is not so much. 
But hopefully we do draw a second land off the guide. Opponent did mulligan. They play a swift spear and a swift spear. Okay. We draw another chromatic star. Sack star for green. We get force. Play star. Okay. We're probably dead unless my opponent just like completely bricks and draws nothing but lands. Yeah. Lava spike. So we're taking at least nine. Double lava spike. Uh, and we're dead. All right. Well, the good news is, no matter what we kept, it wouldn't have worked. Um, do I want to bring in Chalice? I could put Chalice on one. This does seem to be a version of a burn deck where um, they're playing a lot of one drops. Um, I mean, Chalice on two versus burn is generally what you want to do. I think we just run it back and, and hope for a good hand. Chalice is better than stone. Not necessarily. Um, this hand is not unreasonable. We do have Scrying, and we do get a redraw with Sphere, and we're holding Worm Coil. We technically have better sixes, but this is a pretty decent seven. I'm going to keep. Opponent also kept seven. So, start Power Plant into Sphere. Opponent starts Wooded Foothills Pass. We draw Sundering Titan. Sack Sphere for green, we draw Forest. Um, in that case, I'm going to Ancient Stirrings. Okay, I'm going to take Urza's Mine. Play Mine. Pass the turn. So this is going to be a turn 4 Tron, but it's going to be a turn 4 Tron into a Sundering Titan, probably, which is going to take out my opponent's lands. We draw Oblivion Stone. I'm going to play Besiege You for the green source, simply for it doesn't get hit by Sundering Titan. Let's go get Tower. Pass the turn. Can't imagine this is a Blood Moon um, for my burn opponent. I'm interested to see why they're not playing anything, though. Opponent suspends Rift Bolt. Passes. We draw Ugin. Ugin is pretty excellent backup for a Sundering Titan. Play Sundering Titan. Opponent is going to smash it. Sure. So we take out two of their lands. And there are no basic lands to take, which is exactly why we didn't play Forest. Opponent untaps Rift Bolt. Comes off Suspend. Shoots us for three. They play Inspiring Vantage, and they pass. I think they just kept a hand that didn't have any burn spells in it for some reason. Uh, Ito76895, thank you for following. Um... Uh, I guess the sphere is better here than tower, rest of the bottom. Play power plant. Play sphere. DDP monster, thank you. Or howdy, how's it going? Um, sack for green. We draw sanctum. Play Ugin. Shoot our opponent. Pass the turn. I was thinking about for a brief moment playing worm coil and then holding on to sanctum to play alongside Ugin. Um, but... I think Ugin threatening to alt in a couple of turns is probably better. Opponent sent me a message. Every draw step has been a land. Wow. Sometimes you just get lucky, I guess. It's kind of unusual for me, but we're 3-0 and with Tron. Going into round four. I mean, the lifelink matters, but... Um, so, opponent was holding path. And if they're not casting burn spells because they haven't for like... They, they cast like two burn spells in four turns. They kept a hand that dealt with Worm Coil because they, they, they had Worm Coil... They saw Worm Coil game one. So either they were holding Deflecting Palm or they were holding Path. Which is why I didn't play out Worm Coil. Opponent also cast a Smash to Smithereens. So I was like, okay, maybe they kept a handful of Smash to Smithereens. And they just didn't have anything to use them on. Um... Which, I mean, like, we were playing Spheres and Stars, so, like, maybe they didn't see that as high enough value. Like, I think playing the Ugin was slightly better there, only for those reasons. But under almost any other circumstances, I think you're right. Okay, Natural Tron, Karn Liberated, let's go. We are on the draw, unfortunately, but you can't have it all all the time, I suppose. Opponent starts Saga. Is this Amulet Titan? Could be Affinity, Redundant Karn. So we're going to play Mine and Sphere. Pass the turn. Saga takes up to two. Selesnia Sanctuary. Okay. This is Amulet Titan with no amulet. We draw another power plant. So Sack Sphere for green. We draw Sylvan Scrying. Um, power plant. 
Sylvan Scrying. And I'm going to go pick up Besiege You. Pass the turn. So if this is Amulet Titan, we basically have a 0% chance to win the game. Because Tron versus Amulet Titan is like uh, Tron's worst matchup. <laughs> yeah, Zeus is pretty good. So opponent's getting up to 4 mana this turn. I think they top decked that amulet too, because otherwise they would have just would have just played it. On turn one, I mean. Okay. There's a dryad. And another saga. Okay, so opponent has two cards in hand. One of them is Simic Growth Chamber. <clears throat> so we're playing Cardinal Liberated this turn. The question is, what are we down ticking on? Um if we hit Amulet of Vigor. They can't play a Primeval Titan, which is pretty big. Um, is upticking the play? Well, we just need to survive a turn, because if we cast Ulamog, the game's over. So let me think about that. If they're holding Primeval Titan as their last card, because they almost always are, they run like eight or nine, depending on what you count as Primeval Titan. Like between Turn Timber Symbiosis and Summoner's Pact, right? If that's their last card and we uptick, we would get Simic Growth Chamber from them, or the Tutor, depending. Um, and then they could top deck Primeval Titan and win the game. <laughs> so if we down tick on Amulet of Vigor, they can't cast Primeval Titan. They can attack and kill Karn, which might make them feel safe to wait a turn, or just like play out, um, what's it called? Growth Chamber. I can't turn for Ulamog, because I only have one tower, though. I do have another Karn. I could... No, there's no universe we downtick on Selesnya Sanctuary. And they have too many land plays. If I hit a if I if I downtick on like Azusa, they can just play too many lands. I think it's gotta be Amulet. Uh, yeah, based on what we know, I think it's Amulet, uh, Brutus. Okay. Opponent attacks and kills Karn. So they're gonna make a saga token and then play what is it, the Simic Growth Chamber picking up Saga. Castle Garen Brig. Okay. So they're holding Growth Chamber 1 unknown. They make a construct. They explore. Cavern. Okay, so the last card in their hand is Growth Chamber. Which they play to pick up Castle Garen. Then they replay Garen. Okay. We draw Worm Coil Engine. Now the question is, what can I do to disrupt them the most? Um, my options are Karn Liberated, which is not a bad option. They're going to get, like, double Amulet this turn, so if they just draw a Titan, we're, like, we're done. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, I cannot take out two lands, because I can't play Ulamog. Ulamog is next turn. I can try and limit their mana by just taking out a Bounce Land. Then they only have three mana, and if they draw Titan, they can't... No, they can still play it, because they have... Uh, they have Dryad, and they can activate Garen Brig, and they can float mana off the Sagas, because they will get to see what they draw before the Sagas go away. Um, if I take out the Dryad, uh, that stops them from like, immediately getting Valakut, but we would still die if they drew Titan. So I think the, I think the answer is we have to dodge Titan. <laughs> um, killing a Saga is not... It's it's one of the better lines. I'm trying to I'm trying to ensure that it's the best line. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I I could play Worm Coil, and I could besiege you a Saga or a Dryad. Play Worm Coil, hold besiege you, and hope they don't tighten. The problem is if I if I play Worm Coil, I have to besiege you immediately because of how I have to tap mana. I agree, like, if I could play Worm Coil and then hold Besiege you, and then they go for the Titan, like, to give it haste with an untap, I could, I could if I had two mana that I could leave up, kill the land that gives haste before they untap it. But I can't do that, because I have to tap seven to play Worm Coil. So maybe the answer is to play Forest and pass. I'm going to play Forest and pass. Okay. See what our opponent does. They drew a card, so we get to... See what they do here. They float double blue. So this could be like a transmute for Titan. They get a map. And an amulet. Okay, so they drew Selesnia Sanctuary. Not sure why they played it. They're going to activate map to get something. Probably Turn Timber Symbiosis. Because I don't know what else they're using all this mana for. 
Talaria West? Yeah, but they didn't need to make all that mana to begin with. They could have made that mana later in the combo, which would have given them more versatility. Okay, they map for Talaria West. They transmute Talaria West. They get Titan. Well, they get Summoner's Pact and then Summoner's Pact for Titan. Oh, well, there's Prime Time. Yep, there's Prime Time. Okay, Besiege You Slayer Stronghold. But they can't give it haste. We untap, we draw Karn, Great Creator. Play Power Plant, play Ulamog, kill Dryad Prime Time. Make a 10 10. Pass the turn. Opponent has to pay for Pact, so it limits their mana this turn. Sort of. Not really. Okay, they play Sanctuary. I mean, even if they play another Prime Time here, I don't think. I don't think they play a Redundant Slayer Stronghold. I think it's a Singleton Land. Like, they either play Slayer Stronghold or they play Hanware. So I think we're okay, even if this is a second Titan. Mmm, you know, it's probably not okay if it's a Cultivator Colossus. But I guess we'll find out. Okay, they play three lands. Okay, they're continuing to play lands. Make mana. <laughs> okay. This version doesn't play any Oblivion Stones right out of the sideboard, so that's kind of a problem. Um... And I guess they're going to go for, like, Simic Growth Chamber, Talaria West. Or Besiege you, I suppose. So I can't just Ensnaring Bridge. Though they didn't pick up Besiege you. I think that was actually a mistake. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. What do we draw? Sylvan Scrying. They have a really big Cultivator Colossus, and they have a Primeval Titan. Um, I th what did they pick up? They picked up... Scorpion Death Drop returns Scorpion Death Drop to its owner's hand with Simic Growth Chamber's ability. That doesn't tell me what they picked. I think they picked up a Bounce Land. Um, can we Blast Zone Amulet and Karn Bridge? We can Blast Zone Amulet. They can, yeah, they can Bounce Besiege you and Destroy Bridge, definitely, because they have so many plays. If I had an Oblivion Stone in the sideboard, I think it would be that. Although I don't think I have enough mana to play and activate it off of a Karn. I can turn two mana into three mana with Sylvan Scrying, getting a tower... So that gives me a total of 2, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11 total mana. So I could play Karn, and I can play Karn. Or I can play Worm Coil, and I can play Karn. I think the play is Karn Liberated Downtick on, like, a Titan. Then Blast Zone Kill Amulet. I think that works. Opponent has to pay. It's an inconsequential amount of mana for them, because they just have it. Okay, they play Growth Chamber, they pick up Besiege you. They're just going to Besiege you us off of Tron. Get a Forest. Okay. So I don't have to worry about Besiege you now. The last card was a land. If they swing everything at Karn, he survives with one loyalty, which is great. We untap. Draw Yavimaya. Sylvan Scrying. Get Tower. Play Tower. Um, Get rid of Colossus. Go to Combat. Attack and exile 20 cards. There is a Titan in the side, but they don't have Dryad, so it, like, doesn't kill anything. It kills a forest. I could have played Yavi Maya, but I still would only be able to kill one land. Okay, opponent top decks a Summoner's Pact. So they Summoner's Pact, searching the last 10 cards of their library, getting a Primeval Titan. And they play Primeval Titan, <laughs> searching the last 9 cards that is their library for Besiju and Simic Growth Chamber. Picking up Besiege You. They hit Worm Coil Engine. They don't even wait to see if I have a third forest in my deck and scoop. Okay, that was a very hard fought match. Um, we are not likely to beat our opponent. I'm going to tell you that much. So Force of Vigor's in. Uh, one Oblivion Stone's going into the side, as is a Worm Coil Engine. Chalice is kind of interesting because Chalice on zero stops uh, Summoner's Pact. He did. He, he misplayed a couple of times. Uh, there were there were lines he should have taken that he didn't, in my opinion. The question is, is is Chalice worth it to bring in the do-nothing Besiju line with Sick? I was thinking about it, and I was like, I think that's the only one that lets us win. <laughs> it's like, playing anything else alongside that would have would have caused us to lose. Um, and if we were going to lose anyway, then hey, it was worth trying, right? Um, yeah, we're on the draw, so... I have played a lot of Tron at this point. For those of you who don't know, I have like something like a hundred leagues of Tron up on my YouTube. So, 
Um, this is a mulligan. This is also a mulligan. I'm going to keep this because we're not probably favored to win anyway. Opponent did keep seven. They start with a grazer line. Play mine, pass the turn. We basically have to top deck tower, but map would have been okay as a first top deck there. Opponent plays Dryad, that gives them Vesuva. So they will have Titan mana, but they do not have um, they do not have Amulet. Expedition map is like less good now, but I'm still gonna play it. Yeah. Well, Battle of Wits is got a little bit better with some of the cards that I've obtained. And it gets a little bit better with Capenna coming out too. And there are a couple of cards that fit right in Battle of Wits. Okay, put a place Sun Home and a Forest. So if this is Titan, okay, transmute to Laria West. Besiege you. Relic. Their hand is Besiege you, one unknown. So we untap. We draw a tower. <laughs> okay, so opponent has Besiege you. <laughs> so they're giving us the opportunity to play something. Uh, so the question is, is it Karn? Is it Worm Coil Engine? Um, or is it something else? I think I think we play Worm Coil. We can play Stone and Karn. It's true, they don't have Amulet. We could wish for... We could wish for Sundering Titan, too. And we would still have Map on board. Let's go for it. Let's go for the, the big high roller play. Pass the turn. So they're going to hit Karn down to one. Oh, they're gonna give they're gonna give the Dryad double strike. Okay, so Karn dies. We draw Karn liberated. So we go and get the tower. Play tower. Pass and leave up Oblivion Stone activation. Upon a cracks relic, draws a card. Plays a saga. Uh, King Qwerty, thank you for following. Appreciate that. They attack us for two. Untap. Draw ancient stirrings. Thundering Titan. Swamp, Island, Forest, Mountain, Plains. Pass the turn. <laughs> the old Armageddon. <laughs> the one-sided Armageddon. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Uh, Karn liberated. Let's go ahead and take out that Dryad. We won't be needing it anymore. It's stirrings. Get another tower. Rest to the bottom. Play tower. Go to combat. Attack you for seven. <laughs> Why is he still playing? Because uh, this is game three and this is for round four, I think. All right. <laughs> Woo! That's a match win and a round win. So just just so you all know, like I made like that looked easy, but that is not. We are not favored to win that match. We are favored to lose like ninety five to five. So <laughs> we did just, just two zero an unwinnable matchup. Easy peasy. Focus for the trophy. Oh yeah, this is the part where I throw it away, right? All right, round five, here we go. Thanks, Miguel. All right, this is a mulligan. This is keep. I'm playing against an actual potato with underscores between the words. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm gonna put back Ulamog here. Actually, opponent mulligan to six. Yeah, I put back Ulamog here against almost every deck. Unless it's control, in which case I'll regret not doing that. Okay, it's hardened scales. This is another, like, practically completely unwinnable matchup. But we're gonna try. And the reason that it's almost completely unwinnable is, is they're just so fast. They play Frexius Core. They have an Arcbound Ravager. Play Power Plant past the turn. Um, if we can stick Karn, we might win. They play Springleaf Drum. Ancient Stirrings. We have Walking Ballistas and Chalice of the Void in the side, so that, that should help quite a bit. They pick up an Urza Saga and play it. And they play Ballista on one. It doesn't win with this board. Um, okay, let's go get a tower. Just because we have to. Let me think about this. So, I can't just get Ensnaring Bridge. I lose if I do. Um, I'm 100% playing tower. Uh, if I play Karn, Great Creator, they can't, unless they activate in response, they can't do anything with Ravager, Ballista on one blocks and kills something. Uh, no, Trinisphere is not, not the way to go here. Ballista is, is, I think, the current best option, just thinking about it. Um, it sort of depends on what they do with Ravager after the fact, but I think Karn, Great Creator into Ballista is our best bet. So whatever they're going to do with Ravager, they got to do now. 
I do wish there was one Oblivion Stone in the side, because that would that would make next turn a lot easier, I think. That's the one thing I don't like about this list. Otherwise, this list seems like it's working pretty well. And I mean, like, you could just swap a Relic out of the side for a, an Oblivion Stone out of the main, and then just play this list as is. Oh, Explosives in the side is, is good for Saga decks, too. That's true. Okay, opponent sacks, Springleaf Drum, makes Ravager bigger. Okay. Um... I could play out all three of my one uh, one mana cards and uptick to just animate a star. It gives me the most possible versatility next turn while drawing a card. And then, like, it gets me close to emptying my hand. You think Ballista is the play? I'm thinking animate a star is the way to go here. Okay, Saga ticks up to two. If they find a way to kill Karn, it's bad, though. It's harder for them to kill Karn this way than it is if you if you wish with Karn. I'm not sure how they would kill Karn, though, is the thing. Because they can't take counters off of stuff to stack things up with the Ozolith. I guess they could sack Ravager with Frexia's core and Modular onto Ink Moth or something like that. But they don't have, they'd have to have a land to do that. Okay, they got a Grove. Yeah, like, if they kill Karn, it's bad. But this is the line where Karn is more likely to survive. Especially with a 2-2 Ravager as opposed to just... Like, us having a Ballista here, they just attack with Ravager, and then it's like, okay, well, we, you know, would have to chump. But I was trying to think if they could stack up the Ink Moth Nexus, because the Ink Moth Nexus has flying, and they do have a Phyrexia's Core and a Modular Creature. So technically, they could attack Karn for three. Uh, actually, it'd be five because of the Ozolith. Animation Mod. Okay. Both at Karn, and I'm going to trade with the Ballista. Okay. We draw Sylvan Scrying. They can make a token off of the animation module. They don't. It's interesting. Oh, they're going to activate Saga is why. We draw a Worm Coil Engine. Does that make my life easier? We want Karn to stay alive. So I think if I animate another star and then like play Worm Coil, I guess I could wish for Ballista, but I'd have to spend all of my mana on that for it to be good. And they're going to have a really big Saga token. I think what I do is crack map, get a... I guess I could get a blast zone. That would kill Star, though. I'm going to crack map, get tower. Well, if they stack up Ballista to kill Karn, that's not a problem, because then we just play big Karn and nuke Ink Moth. Or if they stack up Ink Moth, I mean. As long as it's not lethal to us, which it shouldn't be. Is my opponent scooping? Why is my game lagging so bad? Okay, there we go. Let's go get a tower. Play tower, play worm coil, animate Star. So yeah... The problem is not the like once they commit to something we can answer it. But until that point, it's a little bit of a problem. Yes, Moto is quality programming, that is true. Okay, they animate animate Ink Moth. They sack their modular. They put counters there. Put counters there. Okay. Oh, actually, I might be dead. If let's see, if they float mana, get Arcbound Worker, animate Sack Arcbound Worker, that would be four, and then this would be three, four. That's very close, but I don't think that kills me. Zabaz? Oh, Zabaz might, though. I think that gets it up to nine? Is that right? The only answer was Ballista on three and nobody thought about it. I don't know, I I might not be dead. Opponent animates, this is a three, three. They sack Zabaz... Can put two one one counters on it, make it a five five. Then there's four counters here. Four counters move on to the ink moth to make it a nine nine, and we take nine infect. So we're still alive. And then we can just carn away ink moth, and we're fine. If they go all in, then I'm pretty sure they lose. I don't think there's a way for them to get one more counter out of that. Okay, they make a big ink moth. They're gonna kill Karn. Sure. So away goes Karn. Okay, and they play a Patchwork Automaton. We draw another Karn Liberated. Okay, um, so they can't animate this, which means when it leaves the battlefield, it's not a creature, which means the Ozolith is not going to get these counters, which is great. Um, let's start by sacking Star for Green and seeing what we draw. I mean, that's nice. I can Sylvan Scrying for... Um, I can Sylvan Scrying for Sanctum, or I can Sylvan Scrying for Blast Zone. If I get... Blast zone. I can take out all the one drops. I can do that this turn even. Um, Patchwork Automaton gets bigger, and I get to keep Worm Coil, of course. 
But if I do that, I can't play Karn Liberated, and I would really like to Karn Liberated that Ink Moth Nexus. Mm, I can just play Oblivion Stone and attack, and then play Karn and take out Ink Moth. Blast Zone into O Stone. Then I have O Stone for activation. That doesn't work, though, because they can just animate Ink Moth and O Stone won't kill Ink Moth. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to Sylvan Scrying, uh, get Sanctum, play Sanctum, play Karn. Sack Sanctum and get Ulamog. Okay. Force of Vigor coming in. So is Chalice. Um, and Ulamog and Ugins are coming out. Along with, I think we're throwing one Oblivion Stone on the side. Hey Orch, how's it going? Um, hey Hangdom, how's it going? Let's see. Maybe. Um, all the way 0107. Thank you for following. Appreciate that. Mm, I'm going to try playing it like this. Bringing in Ballista is probably something I should do. Don't you want Chalice on zero, though? I mean, Chalice is, regardless, better than Ugin ever will be. Okay, I can I can bring in a Ballista and a Chalice. We'll try that. Um, it stops uh, Welding Jar, <laughs> I guess. Uh, we would want Chalice on one, but... You know, we could, if we had to, put it on zero. Problem is, Chalice on one is far more disruptive to us, unless we're already winning. Um, this hand doesn't do anything. So it's a mulligan. I mean, this is a turn three Tron with Force of Vigor backup, so we're definitely keeping that. Opponent starts Grove into Hardened Scales. I will start mine. We draw the last Tron land. Play map. We just need to draw a threat. And hope that Force hits some high-value targets. Ink Moth into Hanger Back. All right, that's kind of irritating. Um, it was not worth hitting Hardened Scales by itself. So, Karn Liberated is an excellent follow-up. So, play Power Plant. Pass the turn. Let's see what our opponent does. Ancient Stirrings for the opponent. Saga. Okay. In response to Saga's ability, I'm gonna kill these. Because they don't have the mana for Saga, which means if they want to get that uptick on Hanger back, they have to use Ink Moth and the rest of their mana for the turn. Which means we're going to untap and kill that Hanger back with... Um, opponent says Rude. I, 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 that's fair. It's kind of rude. I'm going to go get Besiju. We draw another map. Play Tower. Play Karn. Take out Hanger back. I think we got him. Yes! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> The trophy is mine! Whoo! That's like two completely unwinnable matchups right in a row, and we two owed them. <laughs> so, can Tron still 5-0 in 2022? The answer is yes. Let's open some treasure chests, everybody. Number one. Ten play points. A mere welder. Treasure chest number two. Five play points. A lucky offering Neko avatar. Brass Herald, and Mortal Kombat! Alright, treasure chest number three. Ten play points, Fabled Passage. Treasure chest number four. Five play points, Finale of Eternity, and Ashes of the Aberrant. Aberrant, excuse me. Uh, what is this, number five? Ten play points, and a Distended Mindbender. Number six. Five play points... A Full Art Rockfall Veil and an Exquisite Archangel. Number seven, five play points, Choice of Damnations and Fateful Showdown. Number eight, uh, Rhyme Skill Dragon, 15 play points. Number nine, five play points, a Extended Art per Perplexing Test and a Loyal Warhound. Number 10, five play points, Malignus, Borderland Behemoth. And the final and 11th chest contains, come on, full set, one time, 35 play points and a Battlefield Forge. All right, that's how we do it. That's a 4-1 followed by a 5-0 today. So if you guys didn't enjoy that, I don't know what you'll enjoy. So please remember to leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe if you're watching this later on YouTube and follow here on Twitch. Um, would mean the world to me if you did. You know, you can always subscribe if you're feeling extra generous. I do have a Patreon. I try and make uh, content like this every week. I try and stream on Sundays. And um, I don't have an OnlyFans, Tarek. <laughs> I don't have an OnlyFans. It's not a thing. Um, 
all the way. Thank you. I appreciate that all the way. Uh, yeah, I, I think I was playing really good today. Um, I think the new medication's helping. That's for sure. But uh, I did not get as stressed. I kind of kept my cool and was able to think about my plays a little bit more before I did them. There's only one punt this le or this uh, stream, which I think is good. Good indicator of uh, how I'm feeling, despite the stress of moving and and all that stuff. This is a, I think, a good final stream. Uh, next Sunday there may or may not be a stream. Uh, join my Discord, exclamation point Discord here on Twitch will get you a link. Otherwise, link will be in the description or on my various social pages. Um, there should be links crisscrossing all of them. There may or may not be a stream next Sunday because it depends on whether or not uh, I am in the process of moving, but it'll be the final stream at this house if it's, you know, I have to, it's a final stream with this setup, not final stream. So um, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I think you're all wonderful people, and I will see you guys next time.